And welcome back to another video. We're on Big Brother 26, episode 9. This episode kicks off with the fallout of Lisa's eviction. And we see Lisa, or I'm sorry, Angela, give the house a big speech about, oh, I said goodbye to all of you and you guys decided to keep me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And everyone, it was just an awkward moment because everyone was just looking like, yeah, that's not really what happened. You were always staying here. <laughs> like, they blindsided her in the stand. And they they kind of just did a blindside for no reason. But whatever. I, whatever. I, like I said, they did Lisa really bold inside this house. We see this confessional with Tucker, and I'm starting to not be able to, like, I don't know. Like, we all know that Tucker doesn't actually talk like this. And he doesn't move. Make these weird movements. I got it. Like, he's really weird. Like, and I feel like at this point, it's kind of like putting on. At this point, he's charismatic. I've said it in the past eight episode reviews I've done. Uh, well, seven episode reviews, because one of them I did two episodes at once. But still, like, it's, it's funny, but it's like, it's beginning to be too much. Because he, he literally gets the most, like... I would say Tucker, Cedric, and Chelsea get the most diary rooms every episode. And you have Chelsea, who just yells. You have Cedric, who just, like, does these weird movements like this. Like, you feel me? And then you have Tucker, who's just like, I don't know. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's so weird to me. I don't know. But we get Kenny just confessing to Angela that, yeah, I voted you out. Like, he just... Those two have been weird, like, the past couple of days. He just openly admitted that I was the one that voted you out for no reason. Well, we get right into the HOH competition. Like, this episode was on for, like, seven minutes and went to commercial. I was like, damn. Like, that was so fast. But then it came back, and they were already at the HOH competition. It looked like immediately I saw Candyland. Actually, I think they started to go to the HOH before it even went to commercial. Then it came off a of commercial right into the HOH. It looked like Candyland. They called it Ainsley Land. Uh, it was like a Candyland setup, and it was like a balance beam where you had to run around and hit these buttons, right? You had to hit these buttons, and you'll get points. Whoever has the highest points in the end win. If you fall off a balance beam, because it was like a, it was a course with buttons. It'll be like one, two, three, four. I think four was the highest one, maybe. If you fall off, your points reset, and you get 45 seconds to complete this course. The first person that went was T-Core. And I remember when I was watching this, this is my actual thoughts. When T-Core went and she hit one button and she kept walking, I was like, well, why don't you just stay there and just keep hitting that same button over and over again? Because that would be me. Like, imagine how many times you can hit the button. Like, I think the first one she hit was a one. Imagine how many times you can hit a one in 45 seconds. The next person, she got like nine points, which was not good, and we found out later. But the next person that went was Quinn, and he actually answered my question of sitting there hitting the button over and over again. Apparently, there was a certain amount of buttons, and you had to hit them all in order for them to reset. Because once you hit it, it lights up, and you have to, like, pretty much, like, it doesn't matter what order you go in, but you have to hit them all again for them to reset again, and you just keep collecting points like that. So you have to hit them all at least once. Uh, Quinn got 18 points, so he doubled, <laughs> literally doubled t -Core's points. He also introduced this strategy in his DR where he hits all the buttons, and I could have swore he said number three, but maybe he did say number four, but basically you hit that one last, three or four, and then once you hit that, once you they all reset, you just hit that one again, so you get all those points twice, if that makes sense. I mean, it it makes sense, but hopefully I'm explaining it to y'all in case y'all didn't see it, and it makes sense how I'm explaining it. <laughs> but anyway, he kept his high score, 18, for a very long time. Like, a lot of people were going. Like, some notable ones, I would say, were my, my two favorites, Rubina and Brooklyn. They both were wiping out. They both fell multiple times. I was like, oh, my God. My two episode one and two favorites, because they were my, my favorites in episode one and two. I still like them a lot because, like, they haven't done anything to make me dislike them except not get a lot of screen time. Like, I don't think Rubina's had one DR in eight episodes. So, <laughs> but another one, notable one, was Cam. Cam actually, that's when Quinn got a little intimidated because he's like, oh, man, here comes Cam. Division one, he's an athlete, he looks great, he's going to, and then Cam wiped out. Cam got a lot of points, and then he fell. So, like, he didn't even get his points. At least I think that's what happened. I I'm sorry if that's wrong. But either way, I know that Cam did not go past Quinn's score. But who did go past Quinn's score, who Quinn did not think was his biggest competition, but ended up being his biggest competition 
until that point was Mackenzie. And Mackenzie went and went and went and it's like she was hitting a bunch of moving real fast and she got to like 21, which was obviously above 18. But then last minute she fell and it was unfortunate. It was unfortunate because she just showed how good of a competitor she is in physical competitions and she didn't even beat his score to be in the lead. She just like wiped out. So she kind of choked. Next we see Cedric go and like I'm just liking Cedric more and more each episode. He he does go like this a lot inside his DRs and he's like just like he's on the edge of his seat all the time. <laughs> it is funny. Um, but he just beast his competition. He completely beast it. I literally tweeted it, or, yeah, tweeted it on X, that, like, he just absolutely killed that competition, because he did. He just, he went so fast. He ended up getting, like, 27 points, and watching him go was just, like, it was something to watch. Like, it looked like, it literally looked like a video game, and he was doing it with little to no effort. Like, he, well, he put in a lot of effort, but from the outside looking in, it looked like this was easy to him, so... Big ups to Cedric. He did a good job. And when he finished, I thought that Cedric was last, to be honest. Because he kept going after he was way past 18. I'm like, just stop. But there was more people. And in his DR, he said, like, there's some tough competition left. And I was like, who? I was so confused. I was like, what? Quinn already went. Cam already went. Mackenzie already went. Chelsea not competing. I was like, who? And then it was Kenny. And I was like, oh, okay, Kenny. They call him Pops. Uh, he did pretty good. He did actually pretty good. And he ended up getting 21 points. And then it was Tucker, who, uh, oh my God, Tucker. Talk about somebody that was amazing to watch. Tucker might have been more impressive than Cedric, but, but not because he didn't win. He failed. Cedric did all that and didn't fall. But And they all used the little strategy. Like Cedric talked about the strategy of hitting four last and then hitting it twice. I'm pretty sure Tucker did, I think. I think Kenny did, and I, I I think Mackenzie did. I don't know. Tucker was just amazing to watch. He moved so fast, so fast. He was, like, hopping across balance beam, but then he wiped out. He fell, and then he had to start over, and he just kind of, like, danced because, of course, he couldn't do anything in that time. Uh, and last but not least, it was Leah. I was like, oh, okay, so there was a few people left. There was three people that I forgot about. And she failed. Like, nothing impressive, nothing, like, super big to talk about with Leah's performance. She just did not get it, and Cedric ended up being the winner. So congratulations to Cedric. Cedric won the HOH. They get into the house, and Cedric... <laughs> so I see Cedric and Chelsea hug, and Cedric and Chelsea's in her, conf her DR, and she's like, oh, yes. They seem like brother and sister relationship. Like, they really seem really cool. Uh, being together as mascots for so long, you would think that they would probably catch feelings for each other, but I know that Chelsea's a little bit older than Cedric, so maybe maybe that has something to do with why they didn't, because they, they seem like they would. I don't know. I don't know. They, just, they seem like a brother-sister relationship, and a real brother-sister platonic relationship, as I know some people say that, and then, but that's a conversation for a different time. But anyway, I digress. Cedric decides to make an announcement to the house when he walks in. Let me just say this. And I thought he was going to say, like, you all did well. That was a hard competition. I won by the skin of my teeth. Like, something. But then he says, from mascots to back-to-back -back HOHs. And he does, like, this cocky-looking face. Which is something that you would do, like, with your friends. Like, as a joke. Like, you know, I didn't think he was being any type of way. But Chelsea's immediately in her DR like, you freaking idiot. I love you, but why would you say that? I'm sure every single person in the house thought that, was already thinking that, and he just brought attention to it. So it was a really bad move, but Cedric just seems like, he seems like a genuinely really, really good person. And like, he just seemed like, you know, this is a game, we're joking, we're playing. He didn't take into account that, oh, some people might take this, you know. But to be honest, I don't even see anybody, I watch the feeds, I watch the feed updates, and I don't even seem like nobody's targeting Cedric, but it really don't seem like anyone's targeting anybody until Kenny... Angela and to be honest we've been saying Kenny Angela now need to get out the house for like the house to get interesting but I don't even think it's gonna get interesting then because I feel like after Kenny and Angela are gone it's Leah McKenzie and then I feel like it's Joe I feel Rubina like all of them are gonna be gone and then like chemo like <laughs> I feel like it's a pretty I won't be surprised if the final two are Cedric and Chelsea I will not be surprised saying that you're right now 
Um, I wouldn't mind it. I liked him. <laughs> so. so now we get to Cedric's one-on-ones. Cedric already knew the target is Angela. It's a house target. Everyone has to do that. And then he talks to Kenny because he gets along with Kenny. Kenny agrees to go on the block. I don't think they showed that part. But they talked because they get along. He's like, uh, let me tell you, I'm not... Because uh, he's like, how do you feel? Like, Cedric asks him, how does he feel and stuff like that. And Kenny's like, let me... Like, he just starts opening up. And he's like... Uh, first of all, I'm not a food truck owner. And he's like, what do you think I am? And then Cedric says, I think you're like a detective or something. And he gives him fist bump and like, you got it. And then like, it's weird because then Cedric was like, I guess it's my turn. And just like opened up to him. Saying he was in the Marine and his what his job actually was. And I'm saying what his job actually was because I don't remember what the actual title is. But anyway, uh, I just thought that was weird. Like Cedric, you didn't have to open up about that. But it was fine. It was a good little moment. Uh, he told him he's going on a block. Kenny misses his family. If you watch the feed, you know he's been talking about going home for, at this point, like, two weeks. He changes his mind. He says he wants to stay, he wants to go, wants to stay, wants to go. It's annoying. At this point, I hope he leaves this week. Then we see Cedric have his one-on-one -on -one with Mackenzie. By the way, when Mackenzie was competing in her DR, she was saying that she wants to win so that she can go after uh Angela and in this one-on-one -on -one, she told Cedric yeah I'm kind of jealous I wanted to be the one that's an HOH when we take out Angela and I'm just like is Mackenzie really a bad player is she really stupid because if she wins HOH and she takes out Angela she's just like all right let's you know shorten up the time before y'all take me out because she's next up like I, I see how this house is going I'm pretty sure we all can see it like Mackenzie and Leah are bottom of the totem pole after Angela and Kenny are gone. So Mackenzie should not take out Angela. She shouldn't even put her on the block if she wins HOH. Mackenzie, this was a longer conversation on the feeds, but Mackenzie basically outs her power. And she, I hate that everyone knows that she has this power now. It's useless or whatever. Like, But like a lot of people have said like she's basically used this as a safety net. Basically, no one puts her on the block because they know that she has this power and she'll just take herself down. Next, we see Cedric's one-on-one -on -one with Chelsea, and Chelsea throws under the bus Leah and Mackenzie. And right when I saw this, I was like, wow, Chelsea's really jealous of Leah. She just want Leah out the house so she can't cam herself. And it's funny because that came up later. Now we just see Cedric trying to find out his third nominee, and he's going around the house asking literally everybody. He asked, and I'm going to cut to who actually said yes, but he asked Leah, he asked Rubina, they both said no. He asked Joe, he said no, and then he asked Tucker, and Tucker actually, like, agreed. So, I won't be talking about that later, because Tucker agreed. He, Tucker tried to get Mackenzie up or something else, but he just basically said, like, I'll, I'll do it. So, Tucker's agreeing to be pawned two, two weeks in a row, so. Oh, he's, he's getting that, gaining trust, gaining allies. He's good on him, born for us. So now we get the showman scene, or the no man scene, and it was cool to see, I'm not gonna lie, I like this. Mackenzie was like, oh, I wonder if America or the powers that be is gonna be mad that the showman's left early. Shut up, shut up, just shut up, Mackenzie, just shut up. <laughs> like, I don't know, no, we're not mad at all, but the powers that be might be mad, you might have that true. I sound like Tucker or something like that. So yeah, Chelsea gives us the, the little, I don't know even what to call it. But basically, Tucker, or Chelsea likes Cam, which we all knew. That's pretty much why she don't like Leah, because Cam likes Leah. Quinn likes Leah as well. So they're, like, competing for Leah. But then Leah likes Tucker. So, like, but Chelsea gave it the explanation in a way more entertaining way, and it was funny. <laughs> so, like, I thought that was pretty cool and good scene. Then we see Cedric and Tucker talking. Kenny walks up. He's like, oh, you guys having a one-on-one? -on -one? And Cedric was like, no, nah, come on, Pops, come on. And all three of them talk. And basically, he just says, the target is Angela. I'm looking for you guys to be pawns, yada, yada, blah, 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 blah. Kenny talks about how he thinks the girls are around each other too much, and he thinks there's a girl alliance. We get to the nominations, and Cedric nominates Angela, Kenny, and Tucker. I think this is pretty much the nominees that there were last week. <laughs> with Chelsea. It's like Chelsea's just HOH. The easiest options, pretty much. And he made a good point, though. He did say these three nominations, nominations stay the same. The two that stay, if either of them win next week, I won't be their target, meaning Cedric. And that is a good point. That's really true. Like I said, I think Cedric's in a really good spot in this house right now. I don't see anyone targeting him. And he's very charismatic. He's really nice. And he just seems like an all-out good person. So good on him. I like him. 
But that's it for this video, y'all. Leave it a like, comment, subscribe, share it on all forms of social media. And until next time, y'all, catch y'all later.